What about now? Haha! -ha. There's audio. <sighs> Thank you for your patience. Uh, hello, Avery MD. Got my iced coffee. Got my game. Everything, everything's ready. So, hello. Um, I'm Gregory Avery Weir. I am half of Future Proof Games. We're a, a game development studio. Avery MD, Melissa in chat is the other half. They'll be monitoring things and dropping links and stuff. Um, as long as their cats keep uh, being okay, Greg the cat is is has been having a bad day. Um, but. Today we are going to be playing Extreme Meat Punks Forever, uh, which is a game by Heather Flowers and some other supporting creatives. Um, it came out in 2018, episodically, um, and uh, is was in the itch.io racial justice bundle. Um, so if you bought that, you own it. Otherwise, it's on itch.io, itch.io, um, and there is a, a second season. So this is season one. Um, there's a second season that uh, that is on, was kickstarted successfully, and is theoretically 2020 is what they were thinking. But I think that date got set before the pandemic, so we'll see. Um, so yes, so season one is powered by blood. Um, I don't have any big like future-proof games news. Um, we're we're putting out newsletters that kind of give some updates. Uh, at the moment, we're working on a supplement to Rosette Diceless, um, but you can you can oh, well, I'll say that again and talk about stuff um, as we go. So I think we can get started. Oh, I guess I should probably retweet the announcement to my personal account and then and then we'll be ready to go um, it's worth checking out uh, on Heather Flowers account she has um, a uh, the meat punk manifesto that presumably I've only skimmed like the first the opening to it but it um, seems to provide a sort of ideological backing for what's going on in this game um, so, we're checking out. Alright, uh, and content warning, it's in the topic, but there's this is a game about fighting neo-Nazis and body horror, so... Heads up. This is a story about a world much like our own. The people there are like the ones here. They're weird, they're messy, they're trying their best in a broken world. Hello, Heather Flowers is in chat! Awesome! Uh, as the, the designer, writer, artist for some of it... A lot of stuff. Most things are the same. Thank you for joining us. Uh, there are a few differences, though. First off, well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Episode 1, Pilots, Part 1. A seedy dive bar at the edge of sundown. It's a Saturday, and the game's on the radio. Sam and Jason are at the bar. Jason is exuberant as the Blood Masons score a point. Sam gives off a weak smile. Let me know if the music needs to get adjusted. I love it, but it's loud in my headphones. Okay. Woo! Go Blood Masons! Hey, go Blood Masons! Wait, I zoned out! What were we talking about? What were we just talking about? It's hard to yell. Uh, hmm. How you're leaving tomorrow didn't tell me, or I think something about the game. Let's, let's do real talk. How you're leaving tomorrow didn't tell me. Okay, 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 okay. You're right to be mad. I should have told you. But you worry. You don't gotta save me every time, dude. I, I don't. How long have we been friends, Sam? I honestly have no idea. Yeah, it's been a long time. And you always worry about me? I mean, th three question marks in a spoken sentence, dude. I would be worried, too. You're my best friend in the whole world, not just because you're the only other gay person in this town. Well, you don't gotta save me. Almost certainly not the only other gay person in this town. I haven't died yet, right? 
I guess so. Where are you going, anyways? To the big city! Gonna get a crabby apartment, a shitty job, and drink and complain about it on the weekends. You do all of that here. Okay, true, but... Consider... City gays... Hmm... Those wonderful gays... Never once seen a murder horse. All believing in cryptids, ironically. Those blushing versions of the total horrifying void that is growing up out here. Murder horse. There's a long tradition of murder horses in good queer video games. It's a horse, horse master? Is that the good twine game? Sam looks like he has something he wants to say, but the blood masons score the winning point and Jason loses his shit. Jason notices a couple brooding fans wearing the grayscale of the Fash Collective. In your face, Fash punks! Hey, uh, uh, Jason? Y'all suck at sports, y'all suck at life! Jason, that's true, but... They've probably been drinking. The two look at each other and get up in unison. Jason, buddy, you should probably... I'm gonna kick your ass! No, wait. I'm too drunk to kick your ass. My friend Sam is gonna kick your ass! Jason... Jason. Now I'm kind of glad you're leaving. I heard you could fight, lol. Look, I don't want any tri- what, what, What'd you come in here if you don't want to fight for your right to live? Lol. Just fuck off and let me have this beer in peace. I've had a long day and just- Incredibly racist joke. <sighs> oh, look at him, he's stomped. He couldn't deal with their intellectual rigor, lol. There's no way I'm getting out of this without fighting you, is there? <laughs> nope. Fine. Fuck it, fine. Parking lot. Five minutes. They leave, sneering and giggling. Sne sneering and giggling about getting a rise out of you. God, they suck. Hey, yeah, you've got- Oh, that's not, that's not his voice. Hell yeah, you've got this, dude. So you're going to back me up? I'm too drunk to drive! God damn it. Actually gonna move my brace, my right brace at least. I don't know if this is my mouse control, but I don't. My arms, my hands, too sweaty to do potential mice control, mouse control uh, in a brace. All right, you are Sam. Jason follows you out into the parking lot, stumbling over his feet. He cheers you on as you face the mech. You climb inside the ribcage, wrinkling your nose as the stench hits you. Rot smell, grass cuttings, fertilizer, leftovers from the day's work. You grab the shoulder meat and strap yourself in. You grit your teeth, whisper your name, and plunge your neck backwards onto the spike. Fuck yeah. The, I like the, the whisper your name, like, mechs, mechs are about identity. The shock of millions of new neurons entering your system makes you double over. Your digging claws scratch the asphalt, uneven and cracked, feeling every inch. It's hard to control, but you've learned how to ride it out. After a few seconds, you stand. Awesome. I... I will... see if I come up with any, and I'm sure Melissa Avery MD will... will maybe have some too since they won't be like constantly reading you are roots among ash hey jason you're gonna talk me through this right absolutely 100 percent. you got this bud okay i've never really been in a mech fight before is is, is the main thing why were you talking about piloting all the time it's a farming mech boss yeah on the farm you know my job Okay, 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 okay. Jason lowers his voice down low and gets close to you. Okay, so you gotta, uh... You gotta use the Wazi keys to move around. Or the arrow keys, I guess? Either one works. What, what does that even mean? I haven't played Metal Gear Solid. Think, think about a, a keyboard and press those keys to move around. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, awesome! Look, just tell me how to throw a punch or something. Alright, alright, okay, so... Imagine you're holding a mouse, right? 
And if you squeeze it with your left finger, you'll punch whatever the mouse is pointing. What? But, but, but wait, if you squeeze it with the right finger? Kaplow! What, is, what does that mean? I don't know! It is something different for every violet. So if I squeeze the left side of the mouse, I'll throw a punch. In the direction you're pointing, with the mouse! Right. And if I squeeze the right side, something will happen. Yeah! Try it out, dude! Whoa, how'd you do that? I, I don't know, I thought about the mouse, and the next thing I knew, I was 20 feet away. Awesome! Punches. A dash. Okay. Punch. Are we gonna do this or what, lol? Hmm. Yeah, fuck it, let's dance. Yeah, lol. Jesus, like you want me to kick your ass. building some sort of AT field, or I'm guessing maybe a, that might be a health marker, or a rage marker. Holy shit! Well, I knocked him out. Okay, health marker. Or damage marker, I guess. Yeah! What, what should I do now? Uh, make him feel shame. What? We should make into that ditch up to the north. Uh, where am I, lol? Shit, right, he got up. Uh, I'll knock him out again and I won't distract you this time. Remember, push him in the ditch. Okay, okay. Not really any telegraphing of moves. So, this kind of seems like a dodge and weave thing. Not like dodge attacks, but just like stay distant enough that you're not going to get hit and then duck in just to attack and kind of hope. Hell yeah! You sure showed him! <laughs> I guess so. Okay, we should run from the cops now. Wait, what? Dude, you just beat up a Fash. Cops like Fash! You didn't think to bring this up earlier? I thought you knew. I had a few seconds, so if you want to ask me any questions about fighting, I am, as they say, an expect. You mean expert? Yes! I want to ask you some questions about fighting. Uh, tell me about status effects. Set of meters, small circles, every time one munch, both, uh, damage meters, the one person who... Okay, so both people take damage from punching, but the one who was punched takes more, okay. Uh, it becomes opaque, the mech takes a status effect, long-term effects, slow reaction time, okay. Oof. Hmm, I wonder if these are mechanically tracked within the game. So static effects, status effects stack up over time and take a long time to recover from. I don't know if that's fiction. That, that sure sounds like rules and not fiction. Let's see, and that's what happens when you get knocked out. Uh, how do we win a fight? Mechs are immortal. Punching another mech won't do much outside of causing status effects. The only way to end a fight for good is to use your environment. So, environmental hazards, cliffs. As it turns out, giant mounds of flesh and gravity don't mix very well. Splash! Oof. All right, let's get going. Talk to the police. Oh yeah, here's Siren's list jet. Sam and Jason take off into the night, twin broken machines pushing against the void for just a little longer. Tomorrow they'll be pulled apart, but tonight they run in sync, years of history egging them on. There's nothing but the plain and the sky for miles. Stars shine bright down on them, pushing through cornstalks, scream sirens quietly echoing in the distance, because the cops are also driving mechs. Just fucking screaming police mechs. Good. They'll never find us out here. Haha, <laughs> yeah. I'm invincible! Shh. I'm invincible! There's a moment of silence. Oh, okay. Alright, chat. Uh, I can say, why are you really leaving? Or, I think I love you. 
they're both gay, but up until this point, the implication is that they're just friends. So, why are you really leaving, or do we confess our love to this drunk loser? <laughs> Alright. I think I love you. I, I think... What? I'm really gonna miss you. Oh, I'm gonna miss you too. Well, keep in touch, right? Yeah, I'll radio you as soon as I can. Okay. Good. I don't want to lose you. The two spend the night in the corn stalks, losing hours to each other's memories. In a few hours, they'll be torn apart by wants and needs, futures shredding pasts, both going where the other can't follow. But now, in this moment, time is theirs. Until the bright comes, they're together, how they should be. Until the bright comes. Uh, my old spoilers, apparently the second season is about killing the sun. Actually, maybe also this season. We'll see. Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. The next day, across town. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the sun, with a U. Cass slowly walks up the aisle, stalking the shelves with radios, crystals, cereal boxes, little flying things. They should be going faster, but their exhaustion betrays them. They stop to examine a blood potion when a shout rings out behind them. Hey, Cass! Cass jumps a little, but tries not to show it. Liana would never let them forget it if she actually managed to scare them. How's it going? Oh, you know... Stocking the shelves and shit. How are you? Wait. There's something different about you. Hmm. Yeah, I'm wearing a bra, or you're not wearing your uniform. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wearing a bra. Oh, hardcore. Proud of you, bud. Thanks, Lee. You're wearing it like a champ! Okay, that was a bit patronizing, but whatever. Hold on, shouldn't you be working the register? Nah, it's all self-checkout now. They fired, like, four guys over it. Jesus. Yeah, I'm lucky they kept me on. Oh, hey, what are you up to tonight? <laughs> I, I think it's... I think I gotta do corn screaming, because I don't know what that is. Probably corn screaming. Again? I swear you spend so much time in those fields. Some farmer's gonna think you're a feral, go out with a bow and arrow, and you're a goner. It's therapeutic, okay? Okay, so corn screaming is just screaming in corn. <laughs> you just go out there and scream. Scream while immersed in the means of production. You can scream anywhere, nerd. You should hang out with me tonight. I promise that I'll be screaming. Come on. That's ominous. I run a meat punk group in the church. Wait, what? You mean the, like, hardcore anti-fascist meat punks? Yeah, those. How did this even happen? Remember when I wanted to start a fight club and you said no? Because they're a horrible idea, not to mention illegal. All fun stuff is illegal, Cass. Anyway, I started looking into alternatives. Almost went for roller derby, but it's hard to get a mech to wear roller skates. So I rented out the church community room once a week for a meat punk group. Got flyers and everything. Wow. Do you have zines? <laughs> hmm. I like um, the, the visual novel uh, trick of having... You control multiple characters at once. Um, not, not having a solid pro... Like, protagonist sure but like not a not a player character um it is a it is a good way of of blurring that stuff hmm. uh i i've i have a feeling if i knew liana i would not actually be too surprised at this whole meat punk thing please come it mean a lot to me <sighs> all right but if this ends with us running from the cops, I'll kick your ass. You know I'd win. Later, across town. 
The heat is almost overwhelming on these hot summer afternoons. The only saving grace is the dryness, and that's not always assured. A flyer stuck to a power pole that's more staples than wood at this point comes unstuck and slowly drifts to the ground. It stays there for a minute. The silence is near complete. Nobody wants to be outside on a day like this. Then a light breeze picks it up and nudges it towards a single mech walking down the street. The pilot gets out, trudges over, and picks up the flyer. He scans it through bleary eyes, turns the paper over a couple times. Music is real good in this game. There's a few seconds of consideration as he stands still. Nothing moves around him. He checks the sky, empty as ever, and shoves the paper in his pocket. He saunters back to his mech, just a little more spring in his step. There are a million ways this could go, but one thing sticks in his mind. Tonight is going to change everything. End of episode one. So, Heather Flowers is in chat, the the creator of the game, um, of virtually all of the game. Josie Breckner, visitor. Fucking genius. Yeah, real good. I like it. Um, kind of cowboy with a with an edge um so if anyone in chat has questions like that the developer of the fucking game would be equipped to answer um now's your chance and melissa if you think of anything cool um you're welcome to i'll be talking a lot so i'm not sure i'll have a chance continue save and continue episode two Pilots, Part 2. Cass and Leanna wait in the church community room, watching the door. What time is it? Cass checks the clock. Uh, 6.30? Thanks. <laughs> Nobody's coming. What? No, people are gonna come. I put up flyers and everything. Have people come in the past? Well, not really, but... <laughs> You're here, and I'm here, and that's a start? How is that a start? It's the law of crowds. If one person's doing something, they're a weirdo. But if two people are doing something, then people will join in. Oh, that's actually kind of smart. What's that supposed to mean? The silence is broken by a creak as the door to the community room slowly opens. A stranger hesitantly sticks his head in the door. Uh, hey, is this the meat punk group? I, uh, saw your flyers and, uh... Oh shit, hey, hi! Oh, thank god. Shouldn't we do introductions? Oh, right. Everyone say your name and... Pronouns. Thanks. Everyone say your name and pronouns and... There should be, uh, some kind of question, right? Oh, good catch. Everyone say your name, pronouns, and... Where you're from, most recent near-death experience, biggest fear. I think near-death experience is the right balance of of getting to know someone and not, you know, like, delving too deep. Most recent near-death experience? Ooh, ooh, pick me first! You can just go whenever. Oh, right. Uh, I'm Brad, he, him, and I never fucking learned how to read. <laughs> what? Sorry, I couldn't resist. Okay, so I was out hunting for meat scraps a couple weeks ago, and I found the most perfect neocortex dampener just lying on the side of the road, right? Which is great, but there was a double crow standing right next to it and looking it up and down, so I ran up, and a long story short, I ended up wrestling up with a double crow in the middle of the street. Nearly got run over. I L M I O. Oh, I like this kid. Don't call me kid. I'm Liana, she, her, and a couple nights ago I got drunk and challenged a guy to a knife fight. He said no, but if he had said yes, it would have been totally cool. And also dangerous. I'm Cass, they, them, and Jesus Christ, why were both your answers so recent? Hey, you didn't answer the question. Do I have to? I'm pretty sure it's in the rules. Yeah. <sighs> Fine. It was the Big Mech crash, three years ago, over on Main Street. I was catching a ride with a friend. We took a corner too hard, hit another mech. Lucy asks, I'm interested in the use of text speech in the dialogue and even in the background art style. You know, people saying LMAO, the the ASCII art, I guess, in the back. Would you be able to speak to those choices, Heather Flowers? 
I was thrown free from the crash and landed okay, but my friend... It's at this moment that Sam walks through the door. Hey, is this the Meat Punk group? I saw the flyer and... You! You! Sam! You... Liana! Liana! Liana's the the hothead here. Got some nerve showing your face here. Well, I didn't realize you were gonna be here. <laughs> What's happening? I have no idea. Should we do something? Wait, why am I mad at you again? You don't remember? Ah! Ah! Okay, yeah, I have an idea. I'll take Liana. You take the new guy. Ugh, okay, I'll try. Hey folks, it's time to break into smaller groups and discuss- Uh, you were so boneheaded! Boneheaded, you ruined my fucking life! I ruined your life? Come on! The ASCII art in the background is primarily because I was the one making the background art, and I'm good at ASCII art and not much else. I- I know the- the... joy of- of... using limited resources. For the different typing methods, it's a way of convo conveying voice and character. Sam and Liana both have fairly normal speech patterns, while Cass speaks with a, with a flat tone of voice and Brad ex exaggerates his speech, throwing in key smashes and lead speak. It is pretty neat. It's it's cohesive. It's, um... I don't know. There's a... There's a... There, it, like, like it's hard to recognize your own accent. There are conventions in text that, that, that we just accept, and others that seem disruptive. Um, and it's interesting to see one that seems disruptive. Um, if you can hear me, clap once. Brad claps. If you can hear me, clap twice. Brad claps twice. If you can hear me clap three times, Brad claps three times. What? Okay, thank you, Brad. It's time to move on to discussion. How about we break into smaller groups and talk about your experience with mech fights? Hmm. We want to go with Cass and Liana or Sam and Brad? Let's go with let's go with Cass and Liana. Leon, I want to group up. Okay. So you've never actually told me how good you are in a mech fight? Ah, oh, that Sam makes me so angry! What's the deal with you two? We, uh, kind of got into a prank war when he was a teen. Things got out of hand and he destroyed my porch. Oh my god. Okay, that'll be something to work on in time, but let's focus on the task at hand. You're right, let's talk about beating people up. I haven't been in many mech fights, but I was a boxer for a little bit. You know how to throw a punch? No, I don't. Can you teach me? Yeah, sure. So the most important thing is to keep your hands close to your face and to step with the punch. Step with the punch. Got it. Keep your center of gravity low, and remember that speed is the most important thing. Use your body's momentum to be able to punch from your feet upward. So with a jab, you'll want to straighten your arm directly and turn your fist, and for a hook, you'll twist from your hips to build up strength. This must have been a while back. Okay, so like this... Cass stands up and throws the weakest punch ever. <laughs> we'll learn you yet. How about you? You been in a mech fight? Not really. I know how to take a hit, though, so... There's that. Yeah, well, that's useful. Where'd you learn that? I'd rather not talk about it. Are you sure it might come in? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, fair enough. It's getting kind of late. Should we wrap up? Yeah, good idea. Hey, Brad? Yeah? Cass points at the wrist, and Brad nods. It's wrist time. Got it. What? No, it's it's time to wrap up. Oh, got it. All right, so uh, that was a pretty good session. We only have this room for another ten minutes, so we should probably... Wait! We should figure out a leader. Do we really need a leader? I mean, yeah, a leader sounds like a good idea. We need someone to figure out where to meet and stuff. Okay, fair enough. Should we... 
I nominate Cass. I also nominate Cass. Oh. Um. Okay. Sam, thoughts? Look, I don't trust anybody. You seem cool, though. Alright. Let's meet again next week. Figure out plans, then. It's been a long night. Let's all head home. Sounds good. The four put up the folding chairs and leave the church. Outside. The summer air tastes bitter on the tongue as the temperature drops. There's no telling how long it'll be until the bright comes back. The bright. I think this is also Loki solar punk. It would be a perf perfect night for wistful walks in the dark, staring up at the stars, except for one problem. The large crowd of angry Fash standing right outside the church. Aw, oh, fuck. Fash steps out from the throng. Literally the only difference between him and everyone else is that he has a hat. Are you the meat punks? <laughs> I think... I think... I think we go tactical on this. No. You have meddled with... F w wait, did you say you're not the meat punks? Why do you keep saying it like that? Say what like what? Meat punks. It's one word, dude. Did, did that just assume my gender? Hell, yeah, it's the one joke. Cass, can I please kick this guy's ass? Right there with you, dude. Look, we're not with the meat punks, okay? We were just in the church, uh... Praying? Yeah, praying. Praying to, uh... What church is this? Old Christian. Praying to God to give us uh, strength for the new year. You keep trying to lie to us and you'll just make it worse for yourselves. That's the bastard who put my acquaintance in the hospital yesterday. <laughs> see, you cannot hide from us. Oh, I can't wait to see these slurs get what's coming to him. You will pay for your crimes, and true justice will prevail. Hold on, does this guy look familiar to anybody? The night of retribution is upon us. <laughs> Ooh, who do I want to play? Um, I feel like Liana is probably the one who is most eager for this, so I'll, I'll give her her, uh, her chance. Liana rolls to her mech. You, hat guy. You talk like an asshole. I'm gonna kick your ass. Everyone stay back. This is gonna get messy. You are Liana. Right now, you feel how you always used to feel before a fight. A little scared, but mostly excited and angry. You're not good with emotions. You climb into the ribcage, grab the shoulder meat, and strap yourself in. It's a new body, but the techniques are the same. Hit hard, hit fast. You shove your neck onto the nerve spike. Leona does not whisper her name. It hurts like a motherfucker. You ride it out, feel the new, new neurons attached to you, feel how they move. There's a, it's a very subtle background squishy noise. New body. New chance to make things right. Time to kick some ass. You are Crash Queen. The bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. Okay, cliffside. Got it. What are Liana's abilities? On his primary attack, Crush has a chance to prevent opponents from attacking. Her secondary skill, Juke, doubles her current speed. Okay. Her passive ability, Unrelenting, makes her regular move speed faster. Okay, she's just fast and stunlocks. Here we fucking go. There we go. Now there are two of them. that guess that her okay I guess I need to lead them over here okay can I does that do those effects fade with time yeah I'm just gonna chill out for a sec Come on, 
Come on. Come on. All right. Boom. Oh, you can dash like Sam. Okay. Okay. Uh-oh. Hat dude. Okay. Come on over here. Oh, shit. Come on. Fuck. Okay. Crushed. Okay, so they can't... Oh, we're both... Fuck. Okay. Come on. Oh, damn it. Come on. In the gap. Damn it. Come on. Oh, okay. Alright, so Hat Guy's down. Hat Fash claws his way back up the cliffside, blood dripping from his mouth. Presumably the... No? Hmm. I don't know which mouth this is. Oh, you bitch. It's pronounced butch, asshole. It's cute. Just wait until my father hears about this. He then runs into the darkness. Uh, what was that last part? Wait, I recognize him now. It's Jimmy. His dad comes into the shop now and then. His dad? Yeah, you know, the sheriff. His dad, the sheriff. Yep, you were right, Cass. We just beat up the sheriff's kid. Yep. In the distance, scream sirens. We should run. Yep. The four flee the scene, masses of flesh and blood and bones hurtling across the flat desert ground away from the sound of sirens and the smell of smoke. They can't go home. Not now. Not ever. No time to think about that right now. After a few hours, once the scream sirens have faded away, they stop. Okay, that should be far enough. Hard to be sure, but I'm pretty sure we've been headed north. That means the closest town is Hopeville. I don't know how far, but if we follow the cliff... Wait, no, stop. I started this whole thing. I'm the reason they came to the church. You all shouldn't have to throw away your lives from me. If I go back, turn myself in, maybe they'll let the rest of you go back to a normal life. I'm the one they want anyways. Sam. Forget me. That's not how this works, or please stay. I think that's not how this works. That's not how this works. You go back there they tear you apart. But you might... Nope, gonna cut you off there. They won't be satisfied with just you. It doesn't matter who threw the first punch or who's right or wrong. All that matters is that they were looking for an excuse. It doesn't matter if it was real. We were all there. That makes us all criminals. I hate to say it, but Cass is right. Plus, I made sure that hat guy isn't gonna forget me for a long time. We're in this together now. Understand? Fine. What's the plan? Okay. Here's what I've got. We should be safe to rest here for tonight if we keep a low profile. I'll take first watch. Lee, you want to take second? Sure. Okay. In the morning, we'll start following the cliffside north. Rotating point daily, making sure we all stay on top of our game. As far as I know, Hopeville is the nearest town with a meat pump group. We'll meet up with them, regroup, figure out what to do from there. It's about a week's journey, so make sure to get some rest. Tomorrow, the real fight begins. That night, a dream. The, the diving into the meat pump, not driving into the mech, makes sparks, red sparks go up, dream, blue sparks go down. You are Liana. You dream of fighting. Winning. You're back in the ring. It's 12 years ago. You knock your opponent out easily. She barely gets a chance to hit you. Easy. Too easy. You walk out of the ring and out onto the street. The pain starts in your shoulder blades and spreads quickly. You can't stop it as it takes over your body. There's nothing but the pain. The future hurts. 
the future hurts. Cass shakes you awake. You're back in the desert. It's your turn to keep watch. End of episode two. Save and continue. Episode three. Infinite Desert Hell Zone. The first thing Sam feels in the morning is the cold air, the colder ground, and a foot in his back. One sec. Ugh, what the hell? Wake up, it's getting bright. She kicks him. Why are you doing this? December 12th, eight years ago. Get up. She kicks him again. Fuck. Okay, okay, I'm up. Sam slowly opens his eyes. Brad and Cass are stretching, slowly getting the stiffness out from a night on the ground. Liana looms over him. Liana, you know I have no idea what you're talking about, right? One more sec. Okay. Seriously? December 12th? Eight years ago? No memory at all. Uh... The day you wrecked my porch? Oh, right. Um, sorry about that. It's fine. It's clearly not fine. Wait, last night's coming back to me now. Leona, did you... Yep. You seem awful fucking chipper about it. Yeah, you're welcome, by the way. <sighs> Look, killing people is no big deal. <laughs> what? All I'm saying is, sometimes you're surrounded by fash and have to knock a couple off a cliff. Or you get into some bad debt and have to do things you're not proud of. Your dad hits your mom around a little too much, so you have to shove him in a wood chipper. L Liana, what the actual, literal fuck? All I'm saying is you shouldn't feel ashamed for the things you did to stay alive. Just keep moving and keep fighting, all we can do sometimes. Besides, it's not just us or them. They'll be coming for all of us soon enough. Fair enough. Again, you're welcome for last night. We should get going soon. Bright's coming. Who's taking point? Just so you know, Brad, taking point means going first and fighting. I know what it means. Just look it out for you, kid. Don't call me kid. There's a pause. Hmm. Who should take point? So both Liana and Sam have fought. Maybe Brad. Yeah, I'm thinking Brad. I can do it. You sure? It's gonna be. I can do it. Let's go. You are Brad. What felt like fun last night suddenly feels painfully real. You climb inside your mech's rib cage. This thing might as well be your oldest friend right now. Have to hold on to something. You strap yourself in. Little routines keep you grounded. You still have the little things. Long as you keep the little routines, you should be okay. You flip a couple switches and position your head. You whisper your name just as the nerve spike hits you. Mech body. Mech soul. You can do this. You have to do this. You are Ultra Brad. The bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. <laughs> what are Brad's abilities? Bash, chance to knock out. Overclock, knocks Brad out while launching his opponent. Shit. Okay. Passive is unbreakable. Recover from long-term damage more quickly. I should hope so. And it makes his punches stronger. Let's go! I had a feeling it wouldn't be easy. Time to show what I'm made of. Try this launch. Nice. All right. Hmm. Sort of a self-destruct thing. I'm pretty sure that's... Is that just blood? All right. Um, oh, shit. Uh, 
need to get behind them. So these are not on the same side, I don't think. Shit. Dashes. Motherfucker. Boy, I sure hope this doesn't result in like long-term brain damage or anything. Fit? I can't fit. Okay. Uh, those square hitboxes. Oh, shit. Okay. On the rocks. Alright, come on, come on. Uh, no, 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 no. Shit. I need to get... So I need to knock this person off the cliff, which means I need to get behind them. So I can either knock them out, but they keep dashing back. Okay, I guess I just have to keep it up. Knock them out. Okay. Nope, that's me knocked out. Hope, I hope it's not a problem to just do that every fight. We'll see. There's no, like, stats screen or anything that I know of. So. Nope, that was a bad move on my part. There were two enemies. I shouldn't have knocked myself out. I also should not get behind. Or should not let one of them get behind me. Unless I'm just... It's totally worth it. Oof. Nope. Did not knock them far enough. I don't think spamming movement keys actually helps. I'm interested to see what environmental things other than cliffs and ditches there end up being. Come on. Stuck on the corner of that fucking rock. Come on. Ugh. That's right. I take damage every time I hit, too. Am I dizzy? Am I yeah, I'm dizzy. Shit. My movement is impaired. Okay. I think that the enemies aren't really they don't their AI doesn't seem to want to bother knocking me into the cliff, which is nice. They're just kinda punching, but Ugh. Yep. Yeah, I'm definitely like my reaction time is slower. It's interesting. Suddenly, a refill station. Hey, was that there a minute ago? Fuck, I wasn't looking, probably. Just in time, too. My mech's running low on blood. We should be quick. I don't like the look of this place. Yeah, me neither. Don't trust it. Brad, you know mech's best. Wanna fill us up? Yes, six. What? I don't know, like, yes -um, but gender neutral? I didn't think that hard about it, to be honest. Um, okay. I'll go in and get us food and water. We may have to spend the next week leaving off Blood Station Sushi. It's a bad. It's bad. Hmm. Do we want to hang out with Liana and Brad, or Cass and Sam? is very, um, we know the devil. Chat, which, uh, which pair do we want? First, uh, first request gets it. Diana and Brad are gonna be filling up. Cass and Sam are gonna be getting 
Blood Station Sushi. Yeah, it's definitely in that in that weird queer visual novel tradition. Weird queer horror visual novel tradition. Cass and Sam. All right. Sam, you're with me. Oh, um, okay. The two walk inside, both wary of the building. Something partial Cass and Sam's here. Good. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Just ginger ale. The two walk inside, both wary of the building like it's an open jaw ready to snap shut at any moment. Oh. Its posters are Comedy Dude Chip, Hell Crime War Flick Drink, and Trust No One Beer. Yeah, entire game. Perfectly flawless. The inside of the blood station is dim. Outlines of snacks, incomprehensible posters. I comprehended them fine. They all make perfect sense to me. And beer bottles are all the eye can see at first glance. A young woman at the counter looks up slowly and then back down. So, why did you need me? Something about this place don't feel right. Is it the the woman with the with the face? Not sure what, but we should stick together. I don't know, you've got this cool loner thing going, but if we're going to make it, we should be a team. I don't... It might be the face. I know I just met, we gotta be able to trust each other. That's not what the beer says. And maybe that don't mean right away, but... Think about it, yeah? I'll think about it. What's with the food on these shelves? Scrungle's best. Scrungle's best what? I love you so much, but I can't do this anymore. The flavor. Is it a bag of chips that tastes like a breakup? An alternate universe where everything is exactly the same, but technology is made of plants. That would be bizarre. That one might be vegetarian, maybe? Imagine a universe in which technology isn't made of meat. Are we looking at worm hell? or munch cream. Actually, I feel like in the bright, this this uh, anti-UV munch cream might be good. SPF 5000 munch cream. The label says it's a sunscreen you can eat. I very much doubt that. The two fall silent as they examine the aisles of prepackaged food. So, what are you going to do about Liana? Liana? I feel like it should be Liana if it's two N's. I don't mean to pry, your business is your own, but she ain't your biggest fan. I don't know. I barely even remember why she's mad at me, you know? I know the basics, but the details aren't there. You don't remember? I don't remember a lot of things. Fair enough. Liana is how the... The dead author pronounces it. Let me know if I can help at all, yeah? Yeah. No, I can handle this, don't worry. At least she was only lightly belligerent toward me today. Another pause. I think we've got everything. A week's worth of protein bars, junk food, and water. Shit, this is gonna clear me out, huh? I can help cover that. No. Doesn't matter. Keep your money for later down the line. Hmm. Uh, let's go for solidarity. I'm going to help you. Fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. They go up to the register together. Hi, my name is... How can I help you today? Wait, what's your name? Oh, sorry about that. It's unknowable by... Um... Okay, look, this is my first day. We're supposed to do this creepy unknowable shtick? My boss this morning just kind of sat me down, taught me how to use the register, told me not to steal anything, and that I should be creepy. And then he just left. I want to do a good job, but it's hard improvising an existentially horrifying conversation for everyone who comes in here. My um, real name is Emily, by the way. I was just trying out the thing. I, I guess we could help. 
Oh gosh, could you? I just need to do one more practice run, and that should be enough to get me going. Cast, do we have time? I don't know, but we should probably be quick. Don't worry about that. This place exists outside of space and time. What the fuck? Okay, let's get started. Emily turns around and faces the wall. Uh, hi. We have to... Emily emits a distressing sound as she turns her head backwards to meet Cass's eyes. We have to, uh, buy some food? Hello. Welcome to the register. My name is... How can I help you? Well, what the fuck? Was that good? Helpful yet fucking horrifying. Awesome. Anyway, we still need to finish this transaction. Oh, right. I'll ring you up. Cash, credit, or blood? Uh, cash. Okay, that should do it. Have a day. <laughs> It's at this point that Brad and Liana barge in. <laughs> we found a youth pastor. Can we keep him? What? We found a youth pastor. Can we keep him? No, I heard you the first time. What? Hitchhiker wants our protection headed north. Something about sand plots? Excuse me? Yeah, I don't know either. Will you be able to pay us? Well, he's a sun cultist, so probably not. They're not big on money. Lee, what's your read on him? Seems harmless enough. If he tries something, we can always kill him. Emily looks up from the register. Okay, I gotta ask, are y'all in the run from the cops, or... Only a little bit. We're not gonna kill a random guy. Why not? This hole don't dig deeper. It's only if we have to. Hmm. Alright, folks. Let's get chat input again. We can leave him, or we can bring him. I... Sun Cultist doesn't sound great, but... I just said solidarity, so... If it helps, his name is Ed, and he's very loud, is our, is our hint. I don't know about being loud. Ed has to go with you. Okay. <clears throat> I'll work on my stage yelling. Is he a horse? I hope not. We should bring him. If he makes trouble, though, he's out. We should get going. Gotta find a place to rest for the night. Brad, mind getting a... Uh, What's his name? Ed! You got it. Okay, we should probably get... Hey, Ed! Yes, my child! You're with us. That is great news! Walk with the knight. Oh, dear. This was a mistake. The rest of the night goes relatively uneventfully. The five wander the desert and eventually find an isolated corner between boulders. Yeah, yeah, you, you done fucked up, Avery. Brad spends the night fine-tuning everyone's mechs. Liana gives Cass some more tips on fighting. Sam sits on top of his mech and watches the stars. Ed examines the local flora. When sleep comes, it comes without dreams. The next morning... Okay, time to get moving. Time to get going. Who's taking point today? Let's see... Who haven't I done? Cass. I'll take point today. Let's go. Ed took our dreams, yes. You are Cass. You feel somewhat shaken from your experiences in the gas station. But it's fine. You're used to feeling bad. No use troubling others about it. Pig mood. You climb into the ribcage, holding your breath against the stench. Besides, existential horror isn't exactly new to you. You grow up out here, you learn what it means to see some shit you'll never be able to forget. No matter how much you want to. You don't bother strapping yourself in. 
You grab onto the rib cage directly, bracing your feet against the bones as you shove your neck into the nerve spike. Contact. Millions of nerves attach themselves directly to your brain, and you feel everything. Every ache, every pain, every worry from last time. It overwhelms you, blocks out other feelings. The pain brings with it an ounce of relief. Trash bodies. Trash selves. You are all or nothing. The bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. What are Cass's abilities? Cass's primary attack crushes chance to prevent off opponents from attacking. Secondary skill bulwark negates most of their current momentum. Okay. So they can't get knocked around. Their passive ability, Punch Drunk, makes them stronger the more long-term status effects they're suffering from. Shit. Excuse me. So just get the, beat the fuck up. It's fine. Is So these are the sort of um, like mechanics and rules that I would expect from a much, 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 much crunchier game. Like, like these are, these are some fucking like Final Fantasy five and six level, like, oh, well, you know, you can, if you really focus on building Cass up, then they'll become really strong. Um, but like, I, unless this game takes a wild fucking turn, there's no, like, there's no ability to grind or anything. So that's like the number of total fights you're going to get into. Like there are like six, five or six chapters in here are very little. So it's, it's interesting that the game is like, here's all these fucking mechanics when like the total impact they can have seems low unless there's like a whole lot of combat later, which is real. It's real interesting. It's a, it's a, it's, it's messy. Let's do this. So they should just be fucking wailing on people. You wouldn't happen to be with the meat punks, would you? The giant mech stays totally silent. Shit. Well, here goes nothing. Can I just leave? Just leave? Shoulda. Shoulda right clicked when I got knocked. secret seventh episode that's just every fight in the game with no breaks in between. Okay. Make sure to negate that momentum. Come on. Knock out me. Punch in. All right. Yeah. I like the the weird shimmery, glitchy hologram effect of status effects and so on. Oof. Shit. Crushed. All right. Uh, I can't attack when crushed. Yeah. I think that oof. I think that only comes up when I suffer a status effect. I I do appreciate that the enemy mechs um can damage each other. Oof. It's me knocked out. After a long day of fighting, the Sundown Meat Punks slowly settle down. Sundown, the name of our town? Thought summer air is quiet, with no wind. I think that's the first time Sundown Meat Punks has showed up as a phrase. 
the last of the bright beats down heat, seemingly relentless even as the sky grows red. Sam and Cass, Sam and Cass are out scouting for meat scraps. Ed wanders off to observe the motions of the stars. Brad and Liana are the only ones left at camp. Hey, Liana, can we talk? Sure, kid, what's up? What? <laughs> I don't think Brad's good at being diplomatic. Look, I don't appreciate it when you call me kid. I know I look young because I'm trans, but I'm a goddamn adult, okay? But it seems no matter how much I explain this to you, it just doesn't get through. So how can I explain it to you that I'm not a fucking child? I spent a long fucking time getting to this point. And I sure as shit didn't do it to get patronized constantly by a person I barely even know. Well? Let's try to be nice. Brad, you're a good kid, don't get me wrong, but you just did it again. What? You just called me a kid again 30 seconds after I asked you to stop. This is the shit I'm talking about. Are you just not listening, or are you actually just this fucking meme? Oh, fuck you. Fuck me? Fuck you. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'll tell you what's wrong with me. Is angry or Liana's hurt? I think she's hurt. This is the third fucking time in my life I've had to give everything up. It never gets easier. Not to mention I'm the one who put this group together and you all treat me like a fucking joke. I know we don't always get things right away, but I'm smart at what I do. And you're right. How dare I, out of the kindness of my own heart, try and take you under my wing? So forgive me if I'm distracted and forget one little thing. It's not one little thing, it's my fucking life. I worked hard to get to this point. I'm not just going to let you act like you're the only one hurting here. It's clear you don't respect me if you just fucking say it to my face. Fine. Uh, I don't think it matters. Brad will scream. Fuck this. If you don't respect me, I'm going to make you respect me. Fight me. Whoever loses has to leave the group. Now you're speaking my language. Wait, hold on. What? End of episode three. Save and continue. I get the feeling that there was not a way to avoid that. Episode 4, Crossed Claws. Previously, on Extreme Beat Punks Forever. It's clear you don't respect... <laughs> Previously on as... Well, I, these were released episodically, so this makes sense. It's clear you don't respect me, just fucking say it to my face. Fine. Oh, fuck this. If you don't respect me, I'm going to make you respect me. Bite me. Whoever loses has to leave the group. Now you're speaking my language. Wait, hold on, what? Are you sure you want to do this, Liana? Yeah, fuck it, why wouldn't I be? Hmm. Because Brad's your friend, or because this is a horrible decision? I think because Brad's your friend. I don't think questioning Liana's judgment is a good way to get through to her. Because Brad's your friend? That's what I thought, too. But apparently I haven't been good enough for him. So, instead of learning why your friend's been hurt by your actions, you're going to fight him. Risking both your lives in the process. Yeah, it's a mech story. Come on. Yes. Obviously. Fuck, okay, fine. I want to point out again that this is a horrible idea, but I know you won't listen. We might as well get this over with now. So I guess it's my responsibility to be the ref. Okay, y'all ready? Fuck yes. I'm ready. I can't believe we're doing this. Alright, suit up. We start in ten. The two parts opposite sides of the camp, full of anger and hurt, ready to do anything to break the pain. And now, dear reader, I must ask you to make that decision you've made time and time again. Choose your fighter. Huh? I mean, Brad's, Brad's clearly in the right here. I'm pretty sure I'm, I want to play Brad, although 
I don't want either of them to leave. Let's see, Brad's Brad's ability is Brad whacks people across the map. Liana is fast. That's ugh, fast is gonna be annoying to fight. All right, let's see if I can avoid eliminating her. You are Brad. You waste no time jumping your mech and strapping yourself in. You know this is a bad idea, but you're... Excuse me. But you're so angry you can't stop yourself. You hate this. You shake your head and flip a couple nerve switches. You lost everything, and now you're going to lose it again. Your head's not in the right place when the nerve spike comes through. Cuts your neck. Fuck. You shouldn't be fighting. You shouldn't do this. You have to. This is the only way she'll respect you. The only way any of them will respect you. You slap some platelet fluid on the cut, flip the nerve switches again, and put your head in place. You whisper your name as the spike hits you. Contact. Mechs amplify emotions, echoing nerve impulses that loop back in on themselves. Your anger and frustration and fear reverb through your new form in a way you can barely contain. You are fury. You are strength. You are Ultra Brad. Okay, so y'all are going to have manners about this. No biting, no scratching. I'd say no nut shots, but mechs don't have those. Uh, objection about that? Le there is no way that sentence ends in a way that I want to hear. Fights to the best of four. Knock your opponent out of the ring to get a point. If these are Bloodsport rules, shouldn't it be best of five? Maybe we're running low on time and this whole thing is a terrible idea, so we're just doing four. Got it? Yes, X. You got it, Cass. Time to hit. Time to kick this nerd's ass. Not if I'd kick yours first. Go, Brad. This is a horrible idea, but here we go. Fight. Score is Brad zero. Liana one. Okay, so that's that's the edge. Ah, sorry. Shit, I was reading that and clicking through, but didn't read it out loud. Come on, Brad. You've got this. Got the blood fury came over me. Okay, so I knocked him out. Okay, score is Brad one, Liana one. My my special knocks me out, but launches the opponent. So if I can just hit her with it, it'll be fine. Come on, kid. Want to pack it in early? I don't want to embarrass you. Fuck you, Liana. The only embarrassing will be your face on the ground. That doesn't make sense. Fuck you. Okay, score is Brad 2, Liana 1. Come on, dude, knock her out of the ring! You're sure going hard here, Sam. Everything okay? Yeah, it's a great day. The person who was my sworn nemesis for years is getting beat up by a cute guy. Wait, what was that? Uh, I mean, uh, fight? Damn. Come on, 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 come on. Nope, okay. Okay, score is Brad 3, Liana 1. One more point and Brad wins. You got this, you're so close. Don't think this is over yet. I'll bring it my all. Nope. Shit, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose. Okay, score is Brad 3, Liana 2. One more point and Brad wins. I'm so tired. Can we please go to bed and deal with this in the morning? Sam yawns. Go, go, Brad. Yeah. Just give up. I'll never give up. No matter how bad it hurts, I'll just keep going. Shit. Brad jumps out of his mech and runs over to Liana. I think I won. Oh shit, are you okay? Liana climbs out of her beaten up mech. Okay? Am I okay? Brad, you just beat the shit out of me. I know, I'm so sorry. I, I'm feeling great. What? I haven't had a fight that good in years. You're right, I haven't been treating you fairly. And you just proved it to me. Fuck you, Liana. I'll head out if you still don't want me here, but... No. Stay. That's all I wanted. Alright. Well, that happened. We should get going soon, since you two were up all night doing... What the fuck that was? I'm guessing neither of you are in fighting shape, huh? Yeah, I've got a few broken bones to deal with. My mech's heart literally stopped, so... 
Okay, that leaves you or me, Cass. I'll have Cass. I'll grind their ability up. I'll do it. I wonder if your choice of fighter point whatever affects the story. All right, let's pack up then. I have returned. Whoa, where have you been? I got lost between the large boulders for the past several hours. It was dark. Whatever. Let's keep going. Your Cass. You fucked up, huh? You should have been more watchful. You should have seen this coming. Everything turned out more or less okay, but... So many things could have gone wrong, and it would have been your fault. Oh, Cass. No. You get in the mech. You're the leader. You're supposed to be aware of shit like this. Stupid. Now don't call yourself names. You deserve kindness. That's right. No, you don't. Yes, you do. You grab the shoulder meat and strap yourself in. Did they? they? Yeah, they were the one that didn't bother strapping themselves in the, the first time. A blood vessel above you pops, starts leaking blood. You should tell Brad about that. But you failed him. Why should he care about what you think? You flip a nerve switch, turn off a connector line. Usually take some concentrated horse piss when piloting. So, oh, supposed to ease the pilot dysphoria over time. You don't deserve it. Oh, Cass. Fuck. Fine. You flip the switch back and the line starts to flow again. You whisper your name and shove your neck back onto the nerve spike. Contact. You have to show yourself more kindness. It's the only way you'll make it through. It's the hardest thing in the world, but so is everything else. So you might as well try. I appropriately... Yeah, I appropriately content warning to this. You stand in your new body, bristle your fur, and roar. Oh shit, I didn't realize this one had fur. You are all or nothing. The bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. Let's do this. Excuse me. I like the, like, just utter, like, junk of the, of the the sprites like the with 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 other with other similar elements in the game like it's clear that this could look different but it's just like messy the art equivalent of ground meat uh oh huh no resistance so far <laughs> the cacti have ages on them that's mildly concerning. Whatever, ain't complaining. I always like a, a story told by defying your expectations of how a game cycle works. Stop right there. That Mac. Are you... It does not matter. The strange man looks cast up and down. So this is the one that will see me through. Tell me. When do you hear thunder? Uh, a few seconds after lightning? After lightning. What does it feel like to you, the lightning? Does it matter? More than anything. This person didn't take enough concentrated horse piss. Fine. Or took too much? I guess, I guess too much. So that would mean less dysphoria, which would mean too much merging with the... Yeah, okay. Hmm. Does it, does it feel like something breaking, or feels like the sky is pulling itself apart? Hmm. The sky is pulling itself apart. That it's shredding itself and punishing the Earth for it. That we're being punished for something out of our control. So we keep inside, and we keep quiet, and we hope. Hope. Interesting. You almost understand. I will meet you at the edge of hope. And there, 
you will hear it and you will understand. See, if I were if I were really doing mechanical optimization, I'd just ram myself into a cactus repeatedly until I built up long-term status effects that would make myself stronger. But given cast this whole thing, I'm not going to do that. After a long day, the sundown meat punks settle down between cactus patches. What kind of cactus are these? They're, so they're very tall columnar. Most are there... What would that, like... Organ pipes tend to branch. I mean, I guess you would get an organ pipe that just didn't branch a lot. That's that would that would something like that. I don't know that saguaro. Real straight. After a long day, the sundown meat punks settle down between cactus patches. Brad gets to work on mech repairs. Leanna does some quick exercises. Cass keeps watch. Sam paces back and forth. Ed eats some sand. Anything happen while you were up there? No, nothing. It was fine. So what what are they? Is Okay. So they were on point, so they were up ahead. So like the others were like following behind. Okay. Hey, can I talk to y'all for a minute? The huge Mexican cat. Oh, was that the one that we saw in, in Arizona? Cac Melissa's a huge succulent and cacti fan, and I grew up in, in Arizona, so cacti are a... And plus cacti are just cool. Is that the one that's like Latin name is like big old cactus? No, I think Suaro's the one that's where its Latin name is like Cactus Gigantus or something like that. Hey, can I talk to y'all for a minute? Sure, what's up? Sam freezes with everyone's eyes on him. There's a moment of quiet as he tries to push the words out. I'm... I'm gay. <laughs> Sam. 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 <laughs> Oh no, you're serious. I'm gay too. I'm bi and uh, also trans. <laughs> I don't really have labels to describe what I am, but sure shit ain't straight. You're in good company. Oh. Huh. That's... Carnegie Gigantia. Yep. That's, that's it. I didn't have more to say. There's a moment of quiet. <laughs> Alright, are we going with uh, Brad and Liana or Sam and Cass? Brad and Liana might get us some more some some details on this meat tech. But Sam and Cass are sure to have like heartfelt shit? I don't know. Queer shit or meat shit? That's a very hard decision. I wonder if you can just continue from an episode. That would be cool. Pro I, mm, yeah, I don't know. I can't guess. I think I'm going to go for meat. Meat. I think I'm going to go for repairs. Even though we'll miss out on the... Uh, what I'm guessing we're going to miss out on some interpersonal stuff. But Cass can, Cass can handle themselves. Hey, Leona, want to help me with these repairs? Sure thing, dude. How can I help? Dude, that's... She called him. Dude. Uh, hold this crystal? Sure. H hey, are we cool? Hmm. I think I want to say yes, but... I want to say yes, but... What you did yesterday hurt me pretty bad. Not the fighting. I mean, yeah, the, the fighting. But you said some pretty mean things back there. And I know you said you're not going to do it again, and I do want to be friends with you. 
but it'll take a little time for me to get over that, you know? Plus, you haven't actually apologized yet. Oh. Sorry. Thanks. Hey, hand me that crystal. Oh, uh, sure. Red takes the crystal, lifts it over his head, and jams it inside the mech's ribcage. It falls out a couple times, but he keeps pushing it until it stays. Perfect. It's at this moment that Ed looks up from his work, mouth dripping with sand. I am firm! No, I'm sorry. I mis misread that. It is firm! What? If if firm! More sand spills out of his mouth. You 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 uh, uh, you got a you you've got a little. Get Your your mouth's full of sand. Ed takes a deep swallow, then continues. It is time. Gather round, my children. I'm pretty sure almost all of us are older than you, but continue. Age matters not, for we are all children of that bastard orb, the sun. Why are you guys so into the sun? It doesn't actually exist. Yep. Another trick from the Dawnbringer. We believe that the sun did not disappear, but is merely in hiding. In... In hiding, yes, we, we learned several things. Shh, we're about to get to the good part. Hey, uh, uh, hey, uh... Shh. It is good to question that which we do not know. It is true that we do not know what has happened to the sun. But we of the sun cult believe that the sun is a trickster god who accidentally brought life to this world and now seeks to correct that mistake. It lies in hiding, waiting for its moment. And when that moment comes, it will unleash destruction upon this land. So it is our sacred duty to search the land for traces of the sun's plot. This emphasis is all wrong. We must search for things we do not understand. You are right to question me in these confusing times. Only by questioning the world around us may we hope to find that bastard orb, the sun. Huh. Do you understand? Definite, uh, definite fallen London vibes here. I think I do. <laughs> the rest of the night passes uneventfully. Brad and Liana hang out. Cass falls asleep early. Sam and Ed spend time, some time talking about religion. When sleep comes, it comes without dreams. The next morning, maybe Ed is stealing the dreams. Okay, you all know the drill by now. Honestly, we're in the middle of nowhere. I doubt we're going to come across any trouble, but... Who's taking point today? Hmm. Last time I said that Cass would do it, and they didn't end up getting any uh, any practice. So I think I'll I think I'll go with Cass. I'll take point today. Let's go. You are Cass. You climb inside the mech. Maybe this team's stronger than you gave it credit for. You feel good about that. Maybe they don't need you. Cass, come on. You grab the shoulder meat and strap yourself in. Don't finish that thought. You whisper your name and shove your neck back onto the nerve spike. Better get going before you spiral. Can't afford that right now. You still have a few days to go. You are all or nothing. The bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. Let's do this. A stranger stands in the dust. Someone familiar. Who are you? I'm you, but stronger. What? I'm... I'm you, but stronger? Was that not clear? No, I got you, just... But what does that mean? Where did you come from? Uh... Is it like physical strength? Emotional strength? 
Look, I don't, I don't know. I'm just here to kill you, steal your form, and then take over your life. Is that too much to ask? Why? Why what? Why would you want my life? The fuck kind of a question is that? To be honest, I've been having a really shitty week. You don't want this life. I'm sure it's not that bad. Cass, we're on the run from the cops. We've got no home, no cash, and three other entire human lives riding on our back. If we fuck this up once, and we probably already have, everything crashes down, we all go to jail or worse. I didn't even... What? No, I shouldn't tell you. Too personal. Cass, you said your name's Cass, right? I'm you. You can tell me anything. Cass mumbles something. What? I'm sorry, we don't have great hearing, apparently. I don't want to say it loud. Just get over here. Cass whispers something to the doppelganger's ear. Oh. Yeah. Have you talked with anyone about this? Who would I fucking talk to about this? Everyone around me is a fucking mess. I've got to stay strong, so... Fuck that. What? Fuck that! They're stronger than you give them credit for. You don't have to do this alone, okay? Just talk to someone. You shouldn't... You can't be alone during this. Fine, I'll think about... No, no, don't think about it. Do it. Okay. The doppelganger gives Cass one last smile as they slowly wander into the wilderness. Cass ponders this existentially confusing th scene for a minute, then sighs and continues. Yeah, uh... Doppelganger's like, nope, I'm waiting for the next one. <clears throat> AI still flailing as it leaves. Gives me a clue as to how it works. That was that was a cactus. God, there's fucking nothing out here. <laughs> Apparently, I've only picked cast for the ones in which I don't fight anything. I, I assume I could have fought that doppelganger if I'd chosen the other path. After a long and existentially confusing day, the sundown meat punks settle down between cactus patches. The air is weird almost sour as the scent of rot flesh mixes with aging cacti. Brad manages to put together a small fire. Uh, out of what? Maybe there's mesquite around. Trees. The heat isn't as much as the heat isn't much as the temperature drops, but it's something. Ed crouches at the edge of the light, shoving random plants in his mouth. Is Ed human? Does that mean anything? Hey Cass, how'd it go? Oh, um, okay, I guess. Any cool stories? Nah. Y'all have heard the story of the Central American Wind Tosser? Hmm. No, I haven't. Well, then gather round, because it's cryptid story time. What? No. Can you think of anything else to do? Okay, fine. Let's do this. So our story, story takes place in a little logging town up in the Devil's Teeth Mountains. The years I don't remember. Three fucking hours later. And there she finally got a good, caught a good look at the beast. A spinning head. Ten legs. A body shaped like a long pyramid. Oh, the... But story can change pretty significantly depending on what character you choose. Interesting. That's had to be a nightmare to to chart out. I always avoid that kind of branching. It's just so hard. Got kind of a different character in that prior fight. You end up with a conversation where everyone accuses everyone else of being a clone. That's great. And there's a uh, body shape of a long pyramid. Long pyramid, spinning head, ten legs. Okay. So like a tobacco mosaic virus. It was the last thing she saw before grabbing it and pulling it down into the log flume with her. When the locals woke up the next morning, all they saw was her severed head and some of the creature's legs lying in a pool of blood. They never found its head. Some say the creature's still out there, wandering around on six or seven legs, hunting down loggers. Who's going to object and be like, well, how'd they know what it looked like then? She pauses and looks around. Brad and Sam have fallen asleep on each other. Aw. Ed is lying face down in a cactus patch. 
Whether he's asleep or dead, it's hard to tell. Cass is barely awake. Okay, so the game's linear, but you're seeing, like, it, it branches this way, you know, like, you might get this scene or this scene, and then it rejoins. Okay. I have seen, so even, so even if you're watching this and are like, I like this, I want to play a second season, but... I probably don't need to play season one since I watched this. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to finish or not, but anyway. Uh, apparently, season two is going to take into consideration choices that you make in season one. So, something to consider. And you'll be able to take different paths and get different scenes. Yeah, Braid, like, yeah. Uh, Cass is barely awake. Hey, Gas, what'd you think? Oh, uh, it was okay. Do you believe in cryptids? <sighs> this is a world with double crows. But I guess in a world with double crows, double crows aren't cryptids guess so. I haven't really seen any outside of a today, I guess. Okay. Doppelgangers are cryptid, I guess. Wait, what'd you see? I don't know. Probably just a trick of the light. Huh. Well, we should probably hit the hay. Yeah, you gone ahead. I'm gonna stay up for a little bit longer. Maybe you should talk to someone, Cass. Liana watches the last shreds of bright fall as the night air gets colder and colder. She can't see far. Stars didn't show up tonight. It's concerning. But she sees hints of movement. Has there been a slow fade on this night sky, or... I don't remember. Nothing ever comes of it, but she tries to stay alert as the witching hour approaches. Somewhere in the outer distance, cactus cats play. That night, a dream. You were Cass. You dream in colors and broken shapes. Things seem more disorganized than usual. There's an object slowly growing in size inside your head. Some part of you feels like it's new. Another part feels like it's been there all along. Something too big to behold and too strong to feel. You shake yourself, trying to feel anything as this shape grows. It takes over. There's nothing left. You're nothing but this thing. In the distance, you hear thunder. When you wake up, the sky is pitch black. End of episode four. <clears throat> so, I'm going to keep playing, but I think it is by a break time. Um, so, I will be back. I'll see you all in a few minutes. Um, so, yeah.
possible solution Rewire our connection Maybe less consumption Emerging from a mind of isolation Revalue all that we've been given God don't work on commission On commission We make up one big breathing chain We're quite the same Hey, life's a foolish, foolish game Right, I am back. If you're just joining us, I'm Gregory Avery Weir of Future Proof Games. We're playing Extreme Meat Punks Forever. The dev Heather Flowers is in chat, or has been in chat. <clears throat> and we've just had a portentous dream about oneself being overtaken by something else. Hello! Um, thank you for continuing to hang out with us, by the way. I appreciate it. Um, and let's go. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to finish this. I might finish this. Episode 5. Last Legs. Wh what's happening? Hello? Is it still dark? I don't understand what... There's a slapping sound. That was my face. Oh, uh... Sorry. Two episodes left. What? Who, who's, who's that? It's me. The, the bread man. Oh. Weren't you keeping watch? Uh... Time's an illusion. Lunchtime. Twice. What? Five more minutes. Cass? Cass? Cass! What? Ah! You okay? Yeah, you were just right behind me. Sorry about that. Got up a while back. Had some weird dreams. <clears throat> Sorry about that. What about... There was something inside me. <sighs> oh, shut up. We should get moving soon. Really? It's still dark. It's one in the afternoon. Why does they say that? The sky blossoms with bright white light. Fuck. What the sh shit is going on with this world? 
Whoa, what the fuck? Um, that's unusual. <laughs> what the darkness? Fuck is going on? Shit, I guess something's wrong with the bright. Okay, let's calm down. There's a chance that it only happens once. If we. Okay, never mind. Fuck me. I've got nothing. Brad, what you thinking? Okay, I've got an idea, but it might be controversial. Hit me. We go right back to bed. What? I'm just saying, if we... Ah, oh, if we go back to sleep, there's a chance we can wait this out. We won't make much progress like this anyways. Fuck, this is doing weird things to my eyes. I get what you mean. We're running low on supplies, and we're still two days of walking away from Hopeville. Wait, how did you just keep going there? What? This guy just swapped from night to day and you just... Kept going? Oh, uh... I don't really feel fear. What? Not since 2016, anyways. Long story. Anyways, we should keep going. Yeah, we were thinking the same thing. Hey, I wasn't just because... Fuck! Just because you two are in agreement doesn't mean we all are. Fuck, okay, fine, let's put it to a vote. Everyone wants to keep moving, raise your hand. I can't see a goddamn thing. Okay, fuck, uh, say I if you want to keep moving, I guess. I. I. Okay, and, and opposed? Wait, do we say I or nay? It doesn't fucking matter. Nay. We should try and stay and fix things. Nay! <laughs> Sorry, he's deeper. Nay! Fuck, that's a tie. What should we... Oh. Uh... Shh. I don't know what that is. It's in the real world. Okay, I think it's stable. Fuck, that was weird. It sure fucking was, buddy. So we're gonna get going, or... Yeah, let's go. Uh, hold on. Where's Ed? He's nowhere to be found. On the ground, there's a small note written on a convenience store receipt in blood. Cass picks it up. Fuck, this is bad handwriting. Let's see. Astronomical evidence suggests something weird is happening. I'm going to search in this area. Goodbye, thank you for your help. The night be with you. Huh. Is that it? Yeah, it ends there. No, wait, there's more on the back. Sorry for writing this in blood, I couldn't find a pen. I'm gonna miss that weirdo. Me too. He was less bad than I thought. Wow, glowing compliment. Look. Okay, I'm gonna cut both of you off there. We only have so much bright today. Probably. Let's not waste it. Who's gonna take point? I mean, I still feel like Cass needs some some time in the ring, and also well, my genderqueer ass thinks they're my favorite character, so... I'm going with Cass. <clears throat> I'll take point today. You sure? Last fight missed you up pretty bad. Last fight was a long time ago, motherfucker. Nah, I'm okay. Okay. Let's go. Oh. You are Sam. You're glad to not be taking point today. Cass has got this. You need some time to think anyways. You climb inside the mech, shaken by the bright's apparent instability. You knew stuff like this could happen, of course, but it's never been so violent. You grab the shoulder meat and strap yourself in. So did I just, uh, did I just fucking doom Cass because I sent them on too many missions in a row? Funny. Just as soon as you start to trust people, you can't trust nature anymore. No use worrying now, you guess. You take a breath. Whisper your name. And shove your neck back onto the nerve spike. Good sound. Something is wrong. You're not alone in here. For an instant, your body is not your own. 
You strain against your physical form as a mental scream tears across every neuron. A single word forms in your head. Astra. Star, presumably? But you're alone again. Breathe in. Breathe out. It's okay. You're okay. You take a minute, then join the rest of the trailing group. Time to get moving. You are roots among ash. The bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. Okay, and now I'm Cass. Cass. Let's do this. Okay, I guess we're back to this. Look, Fash, just walk away. Go do something productive with your life. Start a soup kitchen or some shit. Stop being evil and I won't have to kill you. No response. Figures. Okay, let's do this. Oh. Uh, shit. <laughs> he died. Shit. Retry. Right click negates momentum? Yeah. Should use that. Reaction time isn't fast enough. Let's do this. Okay, that worked. Ow. Eventually need to knock them up. Unfortunately. That's me knocked out. Pinballing off these cacti. Oh, 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 oh. Crushed. Can't attack. I can't attack. Nobody can attack. There. Okay. That's a little more manageable. And there we go. Alright, accidentally immediately went to the next screen. No, don't dash away. Damn it. No. Shit. Fuck. Go die. It's me knocked out. It's me probably gonna get knocked out again real soon. Shit. I am I am trapped. And I can't attack while I'm crushed. But it gets stronger each time this happens, so I'm gonna be fucking stumbling around dizzy, but I'll hit harder, I guess. knock one of these people off a motherfucking cliff. Yeah, I'm definitely having trouble steering. Dash. Ah. Ah. Yeah, I am very slow, and you can probably see I'm like... It's like there's a lag on my controls, like I let go of a key and I sort of keep going for a bit. It's a, it's a good, like, well, I mean, it feels terrible, but it feels how it's supposed to feel. One could probably write an over-enthusiastic essay on how the the fact that the enemies can hurt each other reflects something about the fascist ideology, how it's fundamentally self-destructive, unsustainable. There's probably some way to be more nuanced about these fights, but... Feeling like a pinball right now. I don't feel like 
I'm making much progress. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Alright, let me s try splitting... Uh, I can't get too close to the fucking edge, or I'm gonna fucking die. Okay. Okay. Th fuck! Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Do I start? Uh, I start all the way back here. Alright, let's do this. Stop being evil. They won't stop being evil. You can in real life. Sometimes. Once in a while. It's not fun being a fascist, I bet. Like. It's tough being queer, but it's a lot of fun. It's fun being a fascist, really. <sighs> Alright, let me at least recover my status effect. We're continuing. This next one I think is the hard one. The one against three. This is not the hard one. Okay. Actual combat designer. Yeah, this this feels... A, a lot of things about this feel, just feel like they could use tuning. Like... Just like a matter of how big are the collision boxes and... and well, you know, what what do you want the rhythm to be like and all that is just like that's just so much fucking work of uh, of just balancing a bunch of things okay so this will now be a lot easier once I recover I like the the hit pause the fact that kind of the whole thing momentarily stops when an impact happens and the the feeling of like things bashing into each other and bouncing off and that's that's good shit but um i think there's a certain amount of like fuzzy feedback blurriness to it that the fact that there's like i want to fuck something up like no sound effects um and hard to tell like how close am i to beating them um so i think that this will it'll all that will come across a lot better with just more iterations on that. Right. After a long day of fighting, the sundown meat punks settle down on an open stretch of land. There's nothing around for miles as the bright slowly falls without a hint of the panic it showed this morning. Yeah, it's not rainbow anymore. I think that so far, that was the first time where I was like, if I fucking, if I die a third time in this sequence, I don't know. Um, it hasn't been too frustrating so far, but yeah, the the I definitely prefer the the writing the conversation portions. Although it would be real weird to have a thing about mech without a mech part. <laughs> All right, folks, looks like we're back in fast territory. Shit. I know it's not great, but if we're back in fast territory, that means we're getting close. If I'm guessing right, we should just be one or two days away from Hopeville. This is the home stretch. And then everything will be fine when we reach Hopeville, and there won't be anything wrong there. So if there's one thing I can tell about this game's philosophy, it's that it really believes in the transformative power of hope. The air is thick with something needing to be said. Sam and Cass or Leanna? I think like, I feel like Leanna and Brad have had enough time together. I think Sam and Cass should get a moment. Excuse me. Hey Cass, what's up? Not much, just uh, he leans in and whispers. Talk to Brad tonight. Oh, uh, good luck. Thanks. I really need it. You 
really don't. Sam walks over to Brad. Liana rolls over to Cass. The two gravel a little as they pass by each other. Hmm. All right, I'll leave. I'll ask chat who, so we can go with Sam and Brad. When Sam's gonna gonna ask Brad out, or Liana and Cass. I don't know what's gonna happen there. Maybe fucking Cass will finally fucking talk to someone about their shit. Sam Brad conversation extremely gay. I mean, they're they're both extremely gay. Oh. Wait, hold on. Y'all probably can't see that. Allow. Ad permitted term extremely gay. Okay. Apparently, apparently extremely gay is profanity on Twitch, which, I mean, sure. I, I understand why. That's That at least is not just homophobia. Also, wouldn't mind some romance, but also Cass needs help. Liana Cass is more plot focused. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel like Sam and Brad are going to be fine. Uh, so I'm going to go with with Liana and Cass. Did, was it clear, when I was talking about Extremely Gay, was it clear what happened there? That Heather Flowers' post got caught by the auto mod, and I had to allow it. Hey, Cass. Hi. Whoa, capital H. Hi, how can I help you? <laughs> what? You totally slipped back into retail voice for a second there. Aw, oh, shit, I did, didn't I? We've missed so many shifts with this whole running for our lives thing. Eh, fuck it. Working in that place was a nightmare. Low pay, hard work, shitty customers, it had it all. You know that company made a trillion dollars last year? Seriously? And there we were, barely fucking making it through the day. It's not right. Well, that's capitalism for you. Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. All 16 tons, what do you get? That's why I steal on company time. That's not how the rhyme goes. Well, it's all in the past anyways. Kind of funny how the worst job I ever had didn't even have the courtesy to break my bones. Yeah, let's let's go deep. Do you miss boxing? Yeah, of course. The energy in the ring, the constant threat of injury, the thrill of the win, and the pain of defeat. There's nothing like it. Well, if you want another fight, feel free to take point tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. Don't get me wrong, I'm always down to kill Fash, but it's not the same. I don't know how to explain it. Is it the fans? It was probably the fans, yeah. Punching someone just feels so much better when everybody really, really, really wants you to punch them, you know? I literally do not, but continue. Maybe once this whole thing's calmed down, I might see about, I don't know, joining a Bloodsport team, maybe? Yeah? Yeah, I've heard there's actually a lot of disabled Bloodsport players in pro leagues and stuff. Didn't try when I still had the chance back in the city. I was worried I'd embarrass myself. I regret that now that I know I fucking rule at mech fighting. Yeah. Yeah, what? I think you do really good as a Bloodsport player, Lee. Aw, thanks, Cass. Hey, this is kind of a weird question, but... Is it just me or is Sam acting weird? You always think he's acting weird. Well, yeah, because he is. Yeah, tell her what's up. It's not a not a big secret. Okay, what I'm about to tell you is fucking privileged information here. All right, fine. Sam's got a thing for Brad. What? You heard me. That's adorable what that is. Lee. I'm gonna go over there and tell him congrats. Lee. I'll be back in just a second. I... Lee. What? Brad doesn't know yet. Oh. Oh. So our fucking job is to sit back and stay out of the way. This could be good for them, and I ain't seen you mess this up for your grudge. Here? Yeah. Okay, I'll back off for now. 
Hey, do you remember that prepper guy who used to hang around the store, like, constantly? <laughs> I think you, I, I mean, I, I think I got to do the Liana answer with this one. You mean the one who was obsessed with you? Of course I do. Didn't he, like, follow you home a couple times? Didn't, oh, okay, never mind. I read that wrong. Didn't stop until he asked me to threaten him. I found him in the parking lot, grabbed him by the neck, and... Lee. Do you remember the last thing he said before he disappeared? I mean, yeah, dude spit, spat in my face after I told him to fuck off. This place is broken. This world is broken. I will make right what has been made wrong. And then he stormed off. You okay, C? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Just thinking out loud. So, is weird... Weird armor dude is... What's the sound of thunder, dude? The rest of the night passes uneventfully. Sam and Cass stare at the night sky together, neither of them speaking, both of their heads buzzing with thoughts. Brad examines Sam's mech. Yeah, he does. Liana thinks about becoming a blood sport player. When sleep comes, it comes without dreams. In the morning. We should get going soon. Who's it gonna be? All right. Who is it going to be? Any preferences from chat? Cass finally got their time, so... I'm flexible. Liana's excited to kill Vash. Well, actually, not excited. She's just like, yeah, that's just what I need to do. The... I guess I might do Sam. I don't... I mean, we don't know how Sam's scene turned out. So, I don't know. Let's, let's go with Sam. A lot of thumping going on. Some neighbor. I'll do it. Let's go. You are Sam. You hesitate as you climb inside the mech. <clears throat> so much talking. Whose idea was it to do a story-heavy game? You hesitate as you climb inside the mech. You've owned it for almost a decade at this point. Never had anything like yesterday happen before. You grab the shoulder meat and strap yourself in. Oh shit, that's right. I completely forgot that Sam had a fucking star talk to him last time. I probably should have remembered that bit. Can't put it off any longer. You have to face this. You whisper your name and plunge it back onto the nerve spike. Hello? You're alone. It was probably nothing. You stretch, feeling the way bone and muscle contort without the limitations of skin. It hurts, but you've learned to ride it out. The pain is bearable. Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer. And it's gone. Connection. You have a job to do. You are roots among ash. The bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. I've got this. Dash seems real super fucking useful after getting trapped in that corner so much. What's the name? Is this is this Zydeco? Shit. Too close. Okay. Nice. That went kinda well actually. Cliff edges. Oh, that's a lot of cliff edges. Wow. Okay. Shit, shit, shit. 
shit. Oh, no. He died, hell ass. Seems like if I dash and then punch, I launch them further. Which means that there's a kind of momentum transfer thing going on, which I didn't expect. It's hard to tell though. These cacti are hands. Alright. I think this is the hard one. Well, I mean, it's not. There, there's going to be one after this one, but this is where I died last time. Just keep bouncing on that cactus, as far as I'm concerned. Oh. Shh. Skip fight. After another long day of fighting, the sundown meat punks finally take a rest. With Hopefield so close, Everyone's eager to keep moving, but Cass stops the group before Brightfall. Sam, time to stop. Alright, if you say so. You sure, though, if we keep going? No. This next fight's gonna be hard this close to town. You gotta be rested for it. Well, I'm not complaining. Ooh, as a heads up, I'm about to give you a choice between two conversations. If I can narrate her voice jumping out, or loft her voice jumping out. They're both important to the tone of the story and push the plot forward, but one of them is decidedly heavier than the other. Just letting you know ahead of time. Ooh. Sam and Liana have a conversation that goes right, or Brad and Cass have a conversation that goes wrong. What do we think? Chat, I'm assuming the wrong one is the heavy one. So... What are we thinking? I, don't, I, f I feel like... Um, if you want to give specific uh, content warnings that aren't already in the title, you're welcome to. Um, I don't know that, that the wrong one is going to be the, the harder one. Um, I don't... Brad and Cass have generally kind of... Okay. So, wrong one is the heavy one. Um, all right, got a request for Brad and Cass. I was thinking that like they haven't really had a uh, like conflict before. Um, maybe it'll be about trans shit. Hey, guess. Oh, uh, hey, Brad. What's up? No much, just, uh, we're getting pretty close to Hopeville. Sure are, buddy. What are you gonna do once we get there? Oh, um, not sure. Hey, Brad, can I talk to you for a minute? We're already talking? Yeah, I just... Okay, I'm gonna say something, but I need you to promise not to freak out. Uh, not gonna lie, the fact that you said that makes me want to freak out. Kind of makes me want to freak out. Okay, okay, I promise. Cass? Sorry, it's just... Taking some time to get the words out. <clears throat> <clears throat> the night when this all started, when we got run out of town... I wasn't supposed to be there. I was going to do... Something else. Something stupid. I'm not sure I understand. Fuck, okay, I was trying to ease you into it, but I guess it didn't work. Brad, I was gonna kill myself. What? Nobody knew. Not even Liana. The only reason I didn't is because she convinced me to go to the meeting instead. But why? God, 
God, where to even fucking start? Because I did everything right in life and got fucked over time and time again. Because I hate my body almost as much as it hates me. Because I've been living with depression for 35 fucking years and it's never gotten easier. But mostly I'm just fucking tired. Cass, you want to know why I don't feel fear? Because I have nothing to lose. I honestly don't care if I live or die at this point. The only thing that keeps me from throwing myself off that cliff is knowing that I can't abandon y'all. So, what does that mean when we reach Hopeville? That this was another not yet and a long line of not yets? Maybe there'll be something else. Maybe not. All that I know is that I'm tired. say, what if you tried breaking the rules? You should talk to a professional about this, or I've been there. Any thoughts? What if you tried breaking the rules is weird. Uh, fascinating. I feel like you should talk to a professional is uh, not, not, not the best way to respond. I've been there is pretty solid. But I am curious about what if you tried breaking the rules. I think I'll go with what if you tried breaking the rules if I don't see a request in like five. Yeah, let's go for what if you tried breaking the rules. What if you tried breaking the rules? What? You mentioned doing everything right and getting fucked over for it. What if you said fuck the rules and just did what feels right? Nothing feels right though. That's kind of the point of depression. Look, I'm sorry I brought this up. You shouldn't have to worry about me going along with, fuck that. Okay, maybe I don't know how to help you right now, but I'm still going to try. It's a moot point anyways. Anything could happen tomorrow. We'll just have to see what happens when we reach Hopeville. But, uh, thanks for talking with me. Whatever happens, I promise I won't give up on you. I still think you're barking up the wrong tree, but fuck it. If you want to help, I won't say no. I guess. Yeah. What made you bring this up now? Made a promise to someone. The rest of the night passes uneventfully. Sam and Liana get into a push-up contest. I'm not sure if Liana... Liana has the... Well, no. Liana doesn't have the advantage because she would absolutely do it one-legged. Like, from her toe, not from her knees. Brad and Cass talk long into the night. When sleep comes, it comes without dreams. The next so, maybe Ed has come back. The next morning. Alright, this is the home stretch. If any of y'all want to get in some final fash kills before we make it to town, now's the time to do so. Who should I go for in the end? Let's see, Brad's doing fine. And his ability is I forget. Cass is having a rough time. They one that can stop and do better when they get beat up. Liana is fast and generally likes fighting, but doesn't get jazzed about killing people. And Sam has the dodge, which is handy. But also seems to be doing fine. No one, no requests have come through. Let's see, who, who haven't I done? I haven't done a lot with Liana, so I'll do Liana. I can take point today. Let's go. You are Liana. You don't really know what to think here. Some small difficulty you climb inside your mech. Usually you feel scared, angry, excited. But right now, on your last fight, you don't feel any of that. 
you just feel empty. This week has been shitty in so many ways, but you've gotten used to it. You know how to survive like this, how to live this life now. No idea what happens next. You grit your teeth, bow the prayer, and shove your neck back onto the nerve spike. A prayer. Contact. Just gotta do what you always do. Keep your head down, keep moving forward, and trust your fists. They haven't failed you yet. You are Crash Queen. Bitter cliffside air makes you cough as you stand. Primary attack. Okay. Juke doubles her current speed. Passive ability makes her regular move speed faster. Okay, so double. Okay. So it's whatever whatever your current speed is goes faster. Okay. Ooh. A wave of the stench of death washes over you. Not the familiar smell of rot flesh. Actual death. Not the facsimile of it you give yourself up to every day. Dozens of mech corpses line the cliffside ahead. Some pilots lie dead in their cockpits, while others are nowhere to be seen, like they were torn from their bodies and hurled away. Torn from their bodies being the mech bodies. You gather from the torn clothing that this was a fash ambush gone wrong. It's terrifying. There's no other way to describe this scene in front of you. Oh, I'm never around for the fun part. the end of the string of corpses, a figure stands in front of you. Her mech is odd to say the least. Tall, lean, and covered in sh razor-sharp feathers. One of its arms is barely hanging on by a thread. Though she's obviously hurt, you have no doubt in your mind that she could kill you in an instant if desired. Who are you? Doesn't matter. Time to die, Fash. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm not a Fash. You're not no, I'm with the meat punks. And given your entrance, I'm inclined to think that you are, too. Shit, sorry for almost killing you, then. The woman slowly takes off her mask. Don't worry, you wouldn't have gotten close. So what are you doing out here? Looking for Hopeville. We've been out here for days, and... Don't worry, there will be plenty of time to tell your story. She leans into the two-way radio that's fused to her mech. Nightbreak, do you copy? I don't. I can't read Morse code that fast. Tell Dayfall we've got company. You, stranger. Welcome to Hopeville. End of episode five. Hmm. Do I want to keep? Yeah, I'll finish it off. Or. You know what? My throat is getting a little ragged, and I've been very good about taking care of my lungs lately. So I think I am going to call it here and save the last episode for y'all to do on your own. Um, I'm definitely going to finish it, but not on stream, not out loud. Um, so yeah, uh, we will wrap it up there, then. I will turn down the desktop audio a bit. I did my best on the awesome voices. Yes, it has been fun. Thank you for, for joining us, um, Heather, Flowers. It always sounds weird to, like, call colleagues by their fucking first-ass name. Um, thank you for making the game. Uh, it's awesome. Um, the the ASCII art, especially like in this top-down thing, reminds me a lot of of my time spent uh, in the Megazooks community um, and the the fun like fuzzy abstraction of of that sort of ASCII art. Um, I like the character work. Um, like the style. Very cool. Thank you so much for for hanging out with us. 
Um, uh, like I said, uh, this is Extreme Mate Punks Forever. Um, the Season 2 is currently in progress. Um, I think originally planned for 2020, but I don't know how that, uh, how that has changed. Um, I know both how game dev is and how living in this fucking world is. Uh, especially right now. Still on track for 2020. That's awesome. That's bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. That is badass uh, to still be on. Nice. Awesome. Um, myself and Avery MD, uh, uh, otherwise known as Melissa, are future proof games. Um, if you got the racial justice bundle, you own Extreme Meat Punks Forever, and you also own our game Rosette Diceless, which is a tabletop and live action role playing system that is focused on creative collaboration, consent based. Uh, role-playing that, that lets you do a bunch of different kinds of stories. Um, we've also got other games available. Um, you should check them all out at futureproofgames.com. Our current project is a supplement to Rosette Diceless that combines a lot of like stuff we've learned from our own like time playing in our home game plus some, some extra options. Rosette Diceless is in the bundle, yes. Also, uh, Extreme Meat Punks Forever, yes. Um, so, uh, uh, but otherwise, like, it's totally uh, a very accessible price if you want to check the game out. Um, and uh, everything, yes, everything that's that that's probably the best deal that will ever exist in, in video games was that bundle um, and did a whole lot of good. Um, check us out. Sign up to our newsletter. Uh, Melissa will drop the link in the chat. Um, we send out emails about every month um, just with like, here's what's going on. Here's a picture of Liss's cats. Um, here's kind of our thoughts on some stuff. Um, and uh, Heather Flowers, if you want to drop like whatever link is the best way for folks to keep up with your stuff, um, I'm guessing that it might be Twitter. Um, but, uh, that's how you can keep up with the progress of season two. And I think that's about it. Um, we, when we, yes, follow them, follow her on Twitter. Um, and we, uh, after we finish the Rosette Diceless supplement, we might end up, um, Heather.Flowers, good, um, we may end up working on our anti, I guess, I guess only anti-fascist in the sense that it's anti-cop. Um, so not specifically anti-fascist, but yes, anti-fascist uh, game about guerrilla gardening um, that we did for a jam and really want to finish. Um, but we'll see. We'll see if that's our next project or not. Um, that's it. Uh, Check out us. Check out Heather Flowers' stuff. Um, in two weeks, we will be doing... Uh, was may, may or may not have picked what they'll be doing in two weeks, but uh, you can check us out. Um, they also do an every two weeks session of Bioshock that, um, if they're doing it this week, would be Monday, probably. Um, but yeah, check us out. Um, you can go to futureproofgames.com slash streams to check up on our schedule, and we'll also announce it a day or so ahead of time. Um, but it'll be roughly two weeks from now that we do another weird game for Future Proof Plays. Um, so thank you very much. I'm rambling at this point. So uh, stay safe, stay queer, do crimes. Fuck fascism. Bye. <laughs>